They literally had to put the word Allah into multiple copies of the Quran because they got it wrong. Nine different manuscript insertions of the word Allah at places where the word was omitted at the time the manuscript's initial production. Right, so they've I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Well, I, I believe that he was a real person. I believe that he died, yeah. uh, was crucified. The, the resurrection part of it, I'm still, there's still some question. With like the Trinity as well. Well the Trinity, well, the Trinity is something that's quite easy to grasp. Yeah. You know, yes, I, I think so. It's not one plus, but not yeah. one plus one plus one. It's one times one times one. Yeah. You, know? so you, you guys are already smarter than every Dawagandist in this park. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, every it's, Dawagandist. It's a copper coin with the two faces. Yeah. The written tale is it's one coin and two faces. Well, that's connected to the incarnation. That's connected to the incarnation. In, in terms of in terms of Christ having a human nature and a divine right, nature. Right, right. But I think it still applies. It's one coin, but it's two. Yeah. Right? One coin, but three. Or... Yeah, well, we'd have to talk about a three-facing coin in this way. Yeah? True. So, so, so you could say the triangle, for instance. Yeah. yeah. You can't have a triangle without its three faces. All the point that Bob made, you live in one... Three-dimensional space. But it's X, Y, Z. Yeah. yeah well, that's all, the, all of these are analogy. All of these are analogies that demonstrate that one can be three and three can be one. That's what I, I those analogies demonstrate. About putting human, a human, like, this is a thing that gets me with, the, with a lot of people in the park, is you're trying to put a human standard to something that's way beyond us. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's, uh, well, we don't even yeah. understand gravity or, or dark matter. Or exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Particularly gravity. Um, and, and, and so the, the point is, guys, if you, if you can get the fact that w one God in three persons is what Christians believe. Why can't the Muslims? Why is it only the Muslims in this park can't understand it? Goes it? Against their doctrine. I exactly. understand why they it, can't. And they no, don't. Shall, I, shall I tell you why? Because their Quran actually gets it wrong. So m the Quran actually misdescribes what Christians believe. It says that we believe in three gods. Yeah. And so I'm telling you as a Christian, we don't believe in three right. gods. The Quran is telling you that I do what, believe what in three is. gods. So the Quran is clearly wrong. That's a clear error inside the Quran. So it's a clear disproof of the Quran. Oh, that's interesting. So they claim that Christians believe in three gods. Yes. So straight away the Quran's So false. straight away the Quran is false. The, but, but that's, the interpreted, that's their interpretation of our and, and, and that is the reason why you two, who aren't reading the Quran, get when I say I believe. When the Muslims hear that I believe in one God, they have to argue that I don't because their Quran gets wrong. Right. So they have to. They have to argue. And right. Well, this leads me to my question. Yeah. What is Islam? My personal belief is that Islam is the demonically inspired ramblings of Muhammad. Yeah. Now, when I say ramblings, what I mean is that not every single word of the Quran or not every single word of Hadith is demonically inspired. Muhammad basically copied and pasted other people's beliefs, other people's teachings into his book and in, into his statements. And there's evidence of that inside the Quran itself. Because the Quran says, the Quran says, oh, we've heard these stories before, you're just repeating the stories of the ancients. Now, why would people say that unless they had heard these stories before? And we found the archaeological evidence that backs that up. We found the, 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 um, the gospel, the infancy gospel of Jesus Christ that contains the story about, that we find in the Quran about Jesus turning clay birds into real birds. We know about the, 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 the midrashes of the Jewish text that talk about Solomon having a, a visit from the Queen of Sheba who think mistakes a floor for water and lifts a dress. That's in a Jewish text that you find in the Quran. There's, we know about the story of Adam and Eve and how Adam says, you created me from fire and him, you created clay, I'm not going to bow down and worship him. That's from the Gospel of Adam. So the, the Quran is just borrowing other people's literature. And even the critics of Muhammad said, you're just repeating stories we've heard from others. Yeah, but he was illiterate and he was... Um... Was he? Why do you believe that? Because Muslims tell you? Yeah. Are you aware that... No, uneducated doesn't. Uneducated. My, my grandfather couldn't read or write, but he still died a millionaire. Yeah. And I didn't see any of that. Right. Money. So, so, so the reality. So, yeah. No, yeah. I, I, said, I said I didn't see yeah. any of that money. So, so the point is, bro. The point is, bro. Just because someone couldn't read or write doesn't mean they were stupid. Yeah. yeah. Muhammad travelled around the around the the Middle East as a trader, yeah. and he heard people's stories and he remembered them. I can tell you a story. Yeah. If you can't read and write, so long as you remember the story, you can repeat the story. 
And that's what Mohammed was doing. So this argument that, oh, Mohammed couldn't read or write is absolutely irrelevant yeah. to whether he was copying other people's stories. Yeah. All he needed to do was to be exposed to them mm. and to remember them. Yeah. And we know, we know that that's what happened because we find stories in the Quran that we find in other literature that predates the Quran by centuries. Okay. So why were they destroying Qurans? Great question. The reason why they were destroying Qurans is because they, the Muslims started to argue about what the Quran said. Already? Yes. And you're not talking about Ali and Shias? Talking I, I, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about in the time of the, the, the caliphs that came after Muhammad. Gotcha. Muslims were, in, were fighting about what the Quran said. And as a way of stopping this fighting, people came up to Uthman and said, you've got to save the people, they're going to start fighting like the Christians and Jews fought before them. Create a standard Quran so that people don't fight about their recitation of the Quran. So then Uthman creates this secretariat with Zaid bin Thabit and some others who then go around and they start collecting all of this Quran and they create a Quran that even other Muslims at the time said, this isn't the complete Quran. Some of the Quran is missing, yeah. right? And we've what got that. Say that? Um, it, 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 it's in the hadiths themselves in Tahir al-Bukhari. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can definitely find. What I'm going to do, bro, I'm going to give you my card. Yeah, get into it. Let's meet up. Let's meet up during the week. Cool. Yeah, let's meet up yeah. to three, to the two of us together, because I'm going to have to go very, very soon. Let, 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 us, let us meet up during the week and I can go through this in more detail and I can show you the evidence yeah, amazing. for what amazing. I'm saying. Because the reality is that even at the time when Uthman produced his, origi his original Quran, mm. right, that original Quran, other Muslims rejected, like mm. Ibn Masud. He rejected it because he said, this isn't everything that the Quran has. Ibn and, and there are other hadiths that actually say, you know, this surah used to be this big, but now it's this big. So some of the surah, some of the Quran is missing. And then other hadiths say, there used to be a verse of the Quran that said stone people, but now it's not in the Quran. But I'm scared that people are going to stop stoning people when Muhammad commanded us to stone people. So there's lots of evidence that the Quran has been changed. And there's archaeological evidence that they had changed Quran. So this is an example number three, multiple post-production insertions of Allah. They literally had to put the word Allah into multiple copies of the Quran because they got it wrong. Yeah, it says the above figure is not a single, but a composite image showing nine different manuscript insertions of the word Allah at places where the word was omitted at the time the manuscript's initial production. Right, so they've thrown it in there, look. Yeah, they've, they've added it. You can see, they've clearly yeah. added it. They've put it, they've literally, I mean, there is obvious, <laughs> right? That's the most obvious one, but you've got it there. They squash it in between there. They sort of force it in there. Mm. That, there, they scribble away some stuff and then put it in. So, and so Muslims themselves have a changed Quran. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that the changes in the Quran are huge, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's minor. But it's to fit their narrative. It's minor. But the idea that no Quran has ever been changed and that all Qurans are identical is a flat out lie. is clear to yeah. anyone with sight. So I can say to a Muslim, when Uthman canonized the Quran, yep. around collecting Qurans, there was a guy called Ibn Man Mansud. I Ibn Mansud. Ibn Mansud, who did completely disagreed. He, he, he basically told his followers to keep their Qurans that he had recited. Yeah. Um, and so what he was doing, he was rejecting the, the, the Quran of Uthman. And then what happened then? Was there two... So then Uthman start? had all the copies of the Quran that were different from his destroyed. Yeah. So we go back to this question, why don't we have full copies of the Quran from the 7th century? Yeah. Because Uthman and the Muslims have been constantly trying to destroy their Quran because they believe that the Quran should be pre perfectly preserved. But in every single generation, they find evidence that it's not perfectly preserved. And whenever they find evidence that it's not perfectly preserved, they try to destroy the evidence. Like they did in 1924, when the Egyptian government took a whole bunch of Qurans and sank them into the Nile. Because I think the school kids who were reading Quran realized there was differences. Yeah, so when the Egyptian state was set up, they appealed for Qurans yeah. for their educational system. Qurans were sent in from all over the world and students were going, hey, my Quran says something different from his Quran. Yeah. So at that point, 
The Egyptian government produced the 1924 version of the Quran to meet that problem and then took all these Qurans that had been kindly donated by Muslims across the world and sank them in the Nile to destroy them. Muslims have been propagating this lie that every single Quran is the same everywhere for years and we Christians destroyed it. And now what they say is there's one Quran, but there's seven recitations. Yeah. Those seven recitations have different words mm. in the same place that affect the localized meaning of the verse, yeah. which means that we now know that not every Quran is the same everywhere mm. because there are at least seven that, dis that have minor changes between them. Yeah. I don't want to exaggerate. I'm not trying to say that these are wildly different Qurans. Mm. They're minor differences, but they are differences. They're minor changes, but they are changes. Christianity does not stand or fall on the idea of textual corruption. Christianity stands or falls based upon whether the message is sustained. There's a difference between message and words. Yes, words do affect message, there's no doubt about it, but you yourself know that you can write the same message in three or four different ways using different words and communicate the same information, agreed? Yeah. Right. And, and for us as Christians, therefore, it's not about whether the words are preserved, but about whether the message is preserved. And, and the reality is every single Bible everywhere by every group teaches Christ crucified, Christ resurrected, Christ returning in judgment, Christ the Messiah, the Messiah is a divine figure, the Holy Trinity. Is the, is the Codex Vaticanus Vian and the Sinaiticus, are they identical? Uh, no, and, and Christians don't well, need see, them to be. An, an issue there. Right, I'm literally, I've just run out of time. Go. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna address your question. Yes, there is an issue, but is it a knockdown issue to Christianity? The answer is no. And the reason why it is an issue is because obviously when you've got a textual variant, you've got to work out, okay, which one, yeah, which is original. One truth of what no, the, yeah, you've got to work out yeah. which is original. Yeah. But the reality is if, if one passage of scripture says, and Jesus, or if it says, and Jesus uh, walked upon the waters and then Jesus um, healed the sick, and another version, I mean, that's, by the way, no quote from the Bible, yeah, I'm literally. Yeah. And then another manuscript says, and Jesus walked upon the waters and he healed the sick. Yeah. Well, obviously you've got a textual variant because one manuscript said Jesus twice yeah. and one said Jesus once, but then used the pronoun he. So you've got, a, you've got an issue there, yeah. but neither of them are teaching something different. So there's no example in Bibles where there's actual laws that have changed, things that we should do that have changed. Right. What's the importance of that? So in terms of the important stuff, Dr. Bart Ehrman himself says, Dr. Bruce Mesker agrees, Dr. Daniel Wallace agrees. And, and bear in mind, Dr. Bart Ehrman is a critic of Christianity, yeah. right? He states, they all state that not a single Christian doctrine is affected by any textual variant. None, yeah. not one. Yeah. And the reason why is that what Christians believe is based upon what the church teaches, because the church was teaching before it wrote the Bible and then it wrote the Bible, yeah. and the Bible contains what the church was teaching. Yeah. So the message comes before the words of the book. But the, all of the Bibles teach the same message. Yeah. And all of Christian doctrines, they don't rely on one verse. They rely on multiple verses in harmony together. And that's where we get our doctrines from. This is a problem for Islam. This is a problem for the Quran. And the reality is Muslims don't agree about which hadiths to use. Their Qurans have textual variants and those variants disagree. And those variants do affect the meaning of localized verses. And I'll show you some examples when we meet up. And, and, and the point is, so what they're doing is they're taking an Islamic standard and assuming that that Islamic standard must be true for Christianity. I'm telling you, it's not that way. Gotcha. Yeah, this is an Islamic problem for Muslims. Yeah. This is not a Christian problem for Christians. Yes, it's an issue that the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are not identical, but it isn't a knockdown issue. No. But if there are different Qurans, as I've just shown you, there are, that is a knockdown issue for Islam because unlike Christianity, Islam is about the book. Yeah. Christianity is about the message.
they could still have a right book though. And there's been variations on that book, but they still have the right book. Does that make I, sense? I, I, and as I've said before, that I'm not trying to argue that there's massive differences between these different Qurans. Right. But what I am trying to say is that whenever they tell you that all Qurans are in the same, they're lying to you. Yeah. They make a claim. That is not true. Yeah. Well, so how, how yeah. can we... Bro, I'm, I'm apologies. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, Right, so what I suggest we do now... I really ran out of time. I'm teaching a seminar at nine o'clock tonight. So I've got to get back and I've got to set up for that seminar. Oh, online. I'm, I'm doing it online, right? Okay. But you've got my card. Yeah. You've yeah. got my card. Let's all meet together. Let's have a coffee and let's continue yeah, yeah, the conversation yeah, yeah. we started tonight. You get that Bible out and have a read of it. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I'll, I'll give you something just to read in the Are meantime. Local? Uh, I'm local enough that I can meet anywhere in London, <laughs> right? So let me just give you something to read in the meantime. Yeah. Why aren't you a priest? Uh, because God didn't call me to be a priest. Yeah, that's why. Look, bro, I'm, I'm afraid I am all out. I'm all out of time. I'm all out of time. So I, I, I want to give you something just to show that I appreciate your time here with me. So here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Ha have a read of that in the meantime until you find that Bible at home. This is the whole of the New Testament. Yeah. And there you go, bro. Here's, here's something for you as well. Okay. Just to help equip you. And what we're going to do, we're all going to meet up, God willing. Yeah. And we're going to talk some more, yeah? Lovely. All right, peace be with you. Yeah. Peace with you. And, I, and, you, and peace be with you as well. Yeah, God bless. And I just want to applaud you. And I want everyone else to do this. I want to applaud you because you've done what 99% of people don't do. Mm. Muslims have said thing about Christianity. And you actually took the time to check. I knew you would debunk it. I just knew you. I watched yeah. all your videos. So yeah. I knew. And, and my, my, my thing to you is make haste in, 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 in pushing yourself towards Christ. Make haste. Because tomorrow is not promised, brother. There is no guarantee that you will be alive tomorrow. So make haste to secure your salvation. And the surest path of salvation is Christ himself. When you say in your heart that he is my Lord and my God, my Savior, and I am now his disciple. All right.